So hello, 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 Fiona. Welcome back to the Yorkshire Property Podcast. <laughs> Hi, Ash. <laughs> so today we're talking about what to expect from your mortgage broker. Mm. Um, so obviously that's a good one for you to talk about because you're the broker. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> so what when it comes to be, being a mortgage broker, if I'm a client, this is the thing that I want to dive into in, in with this because understanding it is overall, what should a client expect that as kind of standard from a mortgage broker? What type of service do they actually offer? Because I think that's something that I definitely have seen people ask about. They're like, I don't know what they do, what they do do, what they don't do, what some do, some don't, because there's such a range of service under, under one word. Um, so I'd love to dive deep into that, what, what you think, what, what you would expect from a mortgage broker. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think that you should be speaking to a mortgage broker when you first start looking for property. And I've mentioned this before. I think that's really important because you don't want to find a property you can't afford or maybe you can afford more. You need to have that initial consultation. Um, mortgage brokers should then also be helping you, you know, arrange your mortgage and principal, which gets the property taken off the market. Um, should then be arranging another call with you to be really transparent about, you know, which lender are we going to proceed with, which um, interest rates right for you, and really um, make sure that the product is right for that client. And you can only really do that by having a conversation with them to go through it. Um, and then a mortgage broker should then be obviously submitting the mortgage application, negotiating with the, the lenders, keeping clients updated with what's going on through this process, um, making sure the mortgage offer is issued. But then I think also it's important to talk about the not so fun side, which is um, protecting that mortgage, protecting your income. What if the worst happens? It's nothing we want to talk about, but um, if the worst does happen, then you'll you'll have peace of mind that we have had that conversation. You do have things in place um, to protect you. And so, with that, then, so what with the worst? So, just dive a little bit deeper into that to understand that. So, what what do you mean when you say like the type of protection or like the worst happens? What what does a mortgage broker typically do and offer within within that that framework? Yeah, so the, there's various different things we can do. And obviously, exactly what we do depends on the client. But for example, um, it would be things like making sure the mortgages we paid if, um, if one of you passes away, if it's a joint mortgage, one person passes away during the mortgage term, let's make sure the mortgages we paid for the surviving person, um, we can provide um, a monthly income if somebody passes away. Um, to help the surviving person and their family. Um, we can make sure that a lump sum payment is paid out um, if somebody is critically ill um, and, uh, you know, needs need some financial help. Or also a monthly benefit if you can't go to work because you're too poorly. Um, we can provide a, a monthly benefit to help um, pay bills and mortgage, um, which, you know, does happen. People are off sick <laughs> so um yeah yeah it's make, making sure that um everything is in place so if something horrible does happen um financially you will still be okay and you'll still be in your home and so i'm sure you know people who watch this listen to this will think and i, I know like I, it's something i thought about when i when i was first in the property space was like well what what is the difference then between a mortgage broker and let's say a uh, a bank or something like that which we go to and get the mortgage because brokers work with the banks. So, and the, you know, building yeah. society. So what is the key difference between those? Yeah. So a mortgage broker will be able to give advice on um, all banks on their panel. Um, so it may be that you've been to see your own bank and they've told you what they could offer you, but that might not be quite what you were hoping for. Maybe you were wanting a little bit more. Well, a mortgage broker might be able to say to you, ah, well, actually, there are more, there are other lenders who are a little bit more lenient with affordability, or the bank you've been to see won't take your working tax credits into consideration or your bonus. Actually, we do have other lenders who, who would take a view on that. So um, we will be able to give advice on what other lenders can offer as well as that bank. And also 
if we do start a mortgage process, if there is a little hurdle that we need to jump over or if there's a bump in the road, um, then we can always say, okay, don't worry, this is how we can potentially resolve this. Or maybe we can go to another lender who'd be, who'd be okay with this. So it's just giving advice and solving problems, basically, which you may not be able to get if you go directly to the bank. They can only help you with their own criteria and their own interest rates. It makes sense. It makes complete sense. Similar to like uh, having a tradesman come and do your flooring as opposed to you doing it yourself. You know, I'm sure you can do it, but um, mine might not be. You run the risk, don't you, of, of, of it, um, potentially not being the, the exact thing you wanted. And I think that's a. Yeah. Yeah. If you try and do it yourself, maybe you've made a mistake and you think, oh, I'm going to have to now take up all the flooring and start again. But the tradesman might be able to say to you, oh, no two minutes, I can sort this out really quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, this is, I see this every day, I can sort out this mistake and it'll be fine. And, you know, it, it, it will then cost you less money, um, you know, things like that. And it, it, I think it's good to have an expert on board when yeah. you're dealing with something that you think you might know, but maybe you don't know it well enough. Absolutely. And so when would be the best time to normally contact a mortgage broker, a mortgage advisor, if you're in a let's say we're looking to buy a property in the Yorkshire area type thing. Like, and I'm thinking I'm ready to go and buy. When's normally the best time to instigate that initial contact with a, with a broker right now, if you're thinking I'm ready to go and buy and I'm going to start looking at properties, you should be speaking to a mortgage broker to understand the process, understand what happens next, understand how much you can borrow um, and get all the information that you need to be in a really good position when you put that offer in on the property. Um, a mortgage broker should also be talking to you about expectations, you know, what you should expect from us, what the service levels are like right now. Um, you know, just giving an indication to clients of, you know, what, what the process is so they're aware of what's going to happen next. A lot of people will come to me and say, I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, that's why you're talking to me because I do, and I'm going to help you. Don't worry, we'll be all right. <laughs> and I can imagine that's very needed right now as well, um, across the board with 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 um, what's going on with the base rates and things. I can imagine there's a lot of people who, who um, I was speaking to somebody about this recently, saying I think that that more people need guidance now than they've ever needed before, because a decision oh. that they make now could cause big ramifications in the long term it is the, the mess on the floor type of thing with the with the flooring, you know, it could, the decisions now seem to be, the stakes seem to be getting higher and higher. Um, yes. So it's an interesting thing. You said, if you're ready, if you're thinking about buying is now is the time to pull the trigger on looking, speaking to somebody because it's not as simple. It seems to be anyway, not as simple as it was even, and it's changing week on week on week on week right now. So it's a very interesting time. Yeah, I'm inundated with inquiries at the moment from people saying I'm in a fixed rate. It's due to expire in a year or two years. There's a charge for me to leave this rate, but should I do it? Yeah. Um, you know, people are just feeling unsecure right now. They're not quite sure what the right thing is to do. Um, and they don't want to pay a, a charge to leave a rate if that's not the right thing to do. So um, people are definitely looking towards getting some ex some help from from an expert at the moment definitely makes sense any parting words before we end this episode um speak to a broker i think that's all you need to all you need to do speak to a broker who can um give you the, the best advice for you and be there to help you through the process absolutely brilliant